Right now in early March, there are trees that are in full bloom. And which ones do you ask? Well, it would be the elms. Now these early bloomers can be a bit difficult to distinguish from one another, but in this video, we're gonna look at two common species of elm. We're gonna look at slippery elm and American elm. Now, when I say common, that should be taken lightly because in the 1930s, a disease called Dutch elm disease was introduced into North America, and it has since devastated elm populations across the continent. Now, let's go ahead and get to know our two elms. This is an American elm, and American elms are pretty long-lived trees. They can live to be about 150 to 300 years old, and they can grow to be about 21 to 30 meters tall. Now, the bark of an American elm is a light to dark gray color with deep furrows and interlacing ridges that are occasionally scaly. This is a slippery elm, and slippery elms are pretty long-lived trees. However, they're not as long-lived as American elms. Slippery elms only live to be about 200 years old, and they can grow to be about 15 to 24 meters tall. Now, the bark of a slippery elm is a reddish brownish gray color, and it consists of these vertical uh, flakes or plates that are separated by shallow furrows. The wood of our elms has been used to make lumber and boats, whereas the inner bark has been used to make ropes. Additionally, both of our elms can be found in both upland and bottomland forests. However, slippery elm is more common in upland forests, and American elm is more common in bottomland forests. Both of our elms have similar twigs that are slender, which are a little thinner than a pencil. Typically zigzag and have egg-shaped imbricate buds that taper to a point. Also, there are no apical buds on these twigs. There are only lateral buds and a false apical bud at the tip of the twig. The pith of both twigs is continuous, white, and circular. Now that I've established the similarities, what about the differences? Well, American elm twigs are going to be glabrous or mostly glabrous, whereas our slippery elm twigs are going to be pubescent or mostly pubescent. Additionally, there may be these large round flower buds on the twig, and American elm will have these glabrous or dark gray, mostly black flower buds, whereas the slippery elm will be very pubescent with a rusty red color. Similar to the flower buds, when the trees are in bloom, you can see those rusty red hairs poking through the reddish brown flowers of slippery elm but they are nowhere to be seen or scarcely seen on the reddish green flowers of American elm. Both species are monaceous, meaning they produce male and female flowers on the same tree. In the case of our elms, each flower is perfect, so it contains both male and female reproductive organs. The flowers themselves arise in drooping inflorescences early in the year about January to April before the leaves on the tree unfold. These flowers are wind pollinated. When the flowers mature March to June, they will form these yellowish greenish brown samaras that are single winged and they have a fine pubescence along their margin and a notch at the base. Each samara will have one seed each and they will be dispersed by the wind. Both of these species produce leaves that are simple, egg shaped with an asymmetrical base and have a doubly toothed margin. These leaves will also turn yellow in the fall. Now, these leaves can be kind of difficult to differentiate from each other, but generally, American elms will have a smooth upper surface, and the leaves of a slippery elm will have a rough upper surface. Some people say if you chew the twig of a slippery elm, it'll become all slimy in your mouth, hence the name slippery elm. An American elm won't become slimy in your mouth if you chew it. Now, I'm not really a fan of slime in my mouth or people chewing unknown objects. But since I know that this is an American elm and that this is a slippery elm, I'm going to do it for science. So I'll start off with the American elm. I'm going to chew it a little bit. I don't expect it to taste very good, but. Well, it tastes as you would imagine. It tastes like I was chewing a twig. Nothing spectacular happened. I didn't notice anything. So. Yeah, I don't know if I was supposed to chew it longer or what. But anyway, I'm going to try to chew this very thick, slippery elm twig and see if anything happens. You know, I wouldn't advise doing that. Um, and I honestly couldn't tell. I could not tell the difference between the two. So, 
yeah, it's not worth it. All right. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about how to distinguish between American Elm and Slippery Elm with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.